tied series on our hands between No Tomorrow and Team Freedom, which is about what we expected, that it could go either way between these two teams. This is a really important match. To be able to set yourself up and have two victories right at the beginning of Phase 2 is huge for either team. Yeah, I, I mean, we've said it time and time again, and I, there is no series that isn't very impactful, right. uh, especially early on. It's so easy to look at these and be like, everybody's a zero, just all you have to do. But when you think about you have to play every team once, which means that means you can't risk the points you're assuming you're going to be winning, which in for both these teams probably say that we need to win if we want our goals to be met. So it, it is very impactful, even though it seems very easy to look at the score but be like, I see a lot of zeros and ones. This is... This is too close. Yeah, especially between teams who can judge that they are very close in skill level, like these two teams. Trying to overtake a team that beat you that is close to you in skill level is really hard later on in part two of the phase. Up next, game three, Battleground three. Where are we going, Team Freedom? No, tomorrow's going to be actually taking us there, and it's yeah. Infernal Shrines. Yeah, Team Freedom wanted first pick. No, tomorrow picks Infernal Shrines. Yeah, this... According to the theory I've managed to build so far as we transform into Infernal Shrines, it in fact would be a benefit to this map would be over to Team Freedom. Again, because the game typically doesn't snowball heavy enough that they can get the lane game team fight and even footing. But Dread, Kerrigan. That is a good point, but I also have two bands that if I'm really afraid of it, I can in fact go Kerrigan, and then you hit the ban button right after. If Kerrigan gets banned, then No Tomorrow gets Genji. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> you got to You know, it turns out <laughs> when you're good at multiple heroes, it's actually really hard to target ban. Yeah, I, No Tomorrow picked this battleground. It was the last battleground that they were able to win and beat superstars over. They looked good. I feel like this was the most the strongest that they looked out of all of their games versus Superstars was on Inferno Shrines. See if they can prove it again as we decide the MMR. Give me a moment. Tense moment right here between these two teams. There we go. We, in fact, decided the right team's MMR. We figured it out. We know the left team's. Who's the banners? Here we go. Um, freedom. So what do you do then? We've already learned Abathur is not something to be concerned of on Towers of Doom. The fact that we saw zero attention to him makes me just go, this isn't a thing for these squads. So I'm not I'm not worried about that. Dahaka still can show itself. The Kerrigan is there. And the Genji, where does he end up falling? Because we did see him first pick quite consistently for both of these teams, even on maps where he doesn't necessarily accent the objective like Infernal Shrines. I would like to see Freedom's Diva again, if it's not banned or taken away. Ooh. I was staring Seaming at a TV that in. wasn't even working properly. I don't know why. I was just kind of, this is what I do in the middle Admiring of the game, actually. The logo. I commentate on this, and then I look to Gilly and have the conversation, and yeah, you guys, sneak peek here. <laughs> I can't Backstage forget. tour, I can't, not. I can't escape <laughs> the camera. It's always on me, even in trap. Genji's the first pick. Diva ban. And Tass. He's back, Anubarak Uther. Power play here coming out from No Tomorrow. Gilly, I know we, we we dabbled in the conversation about Greymane, but there is not a better map other than maybe Battlefield of Eternity for Greymane. I really hope to see him in this rotation, and if not, at least, at least be paid attention to in this draft. Like, if he has no involvement, I'm gonna be one sad panda, or wolf, depending on, you know, where, who, who you are. Genji? I know, I was transforming into Chen, <laughs> and then I was transforming into Grey Main. I don't know. Transformers, Dreadnought in disguise. <laughs> oh. Immediately what popped in my head, Rhaegar to Haka. Rhaegar to Haka. Don't mind the Rhaegar there. For anybody at home wondering, why do you Rhaegar up that high? Malfurion's still available. He hasn't been nerfed yet. Um, it's one of the few maps at level one. You move into Lightning Bond. You have really good Shrine Control with just you and any other hero. You make both of you very relevant on Shrine Control. Then you also are not picking Malfurion into what is already a Guardian of the Ancient King on the other side. It's actually not a terrible pick. Plus, you already have two heroes who actually really give value of an Ancestral. Yes, and Team Freedom did this exact thing versus even in they death. They did it post-second It was post-second band yeah. phase, but Malfurion was still up but into uh, the Uther. They also had a Genji. I'm really excited to see Freedom get Genji back. I hope that we get to see Kira's Genji again. It was pretty neat. It, it was pretty neat. It was doing the damages, killing the things. 
Tyrio's removed, smart ban, uh, just because the Rhaegar Genji Tyrio combo, you can either move into the double dive with a Judgment X Strike first, you can go in with just raw AoE, you know, we've seen Sanctification plus melee hyper carries, long standing composition, and there in fact there is, is the Kerrigan being banned out. So no, tomorrow's not going to have that in their arsenal. Had to probably realize that they weren't going to be able to get her if they let her go all the way through to this point, especially after playing her just yesterday and being able to beat superstars with it. So where's the transition now? Greymane still up. He has Divine Shield from Uther. I mean, I, at this point, I'm afraid to say the words Greymane, Tychus, or Abathur. There's the Gul'dan replacement. There it is. Okay. I'm afraid of those words, Gilly. I'm, I'm so afraid of them. I don't think I'm even going to suggest it in this next rotation either. The Gul'dan, slow play, vulnerable to hyper aggression like Genji, but Dahaka is usually not somebody I would put on a major threat. You should be able to outposition yourself, play properly on the Gul'dan to not be that afraid of him. So I want to see Freedom either back up, play the macro game, ignore a little bit on the shrines, and then go for a hyper aggression team, kite, team fighting composition, but play the early game really slow now. Uh, just because the Gul'dan rotation out of No Tomorrow, I think that would be a nice transition of this draft. No Tomorrow has both Anubarak and Diablo. Diablo has his Soul Shield at 7, and Anubarak obviously has the Spell Armor 2. They're tanky. I'm expecting Team Freedom to get Tigus here. I know. Don't say at least it. Greyman has Don't say the T Alpha word. Killer at 16, so that's another possibility too about... I, I want the Tigus. maybe Cassio with Martial Law? Just something with... There Thank we you. go. Okay, just something. He exists. With percent base damage. So the Tychus is there. Yeah, the percentage damage and a map to be able to close it out a bit more, a bit earlier, having the Odin. Arthas, a little bit of Shrine Control as well. Uh, works well with Odin, any kind of slow chase. And with Genji. Yeah, it works well with the Genji too. So I, I like the draft here of No Tomorrow. It's well-rounded, considers the map, deals with their opponents. Everything about it's pretty solid. No, tomorrow, not too far off. The Gul'dan Diablo rotation is a bit less common, but uh, we, we've we seen these two heroes on this map. We know the impact they can have, and both are pretty good. It's just, I feel like this last pick has to kind of have a lot of oomph, where we go, oh, it all makes sense now. I agree. And I'm feeling like I can't think of the other hero off the top of my head that recovers. Like, I feel like it's going to be Medivh, and I go, oh, that's, that's what I feel like is going to happen here. He, you know what? He's here. He's back. He made it all the way through. He, but but he showed here. up. He is here. Gray main. All right. So what does that mean? It means a lot of poke, a lot of shrine control. No, no macro whatsoever on the side of no tomorrow. Team freedom, a decent amount of macro, a reasonable amount of shrine control, but they don't thrive on the shrine. Like, they don't necessarily just win it flat out. They have to take the fight, and they have to be successful on it. So if they match blow for blow on the first two shrines, I give it over to the Gul'dan Dan composition, unless they get a major pick. Like, they have to all in, get a pick, then it's like, okay, back out. But if they go for the sustain, eventually the Fell Flame will come out. It'll get too much damage, too much value, and they win in the long run. But so you have macro. You can give up the first two. Totally okay. Just you got to be comfortable realizing the objective on Punishers is just a little bit too weak. So what you want from Team Freedom yes. is to get ahead in the early game versus yeah, Gul'dan. Yeah, I, yeah. Just throwing it out there. Just, you're not, now that you put it in that set, like in that form, it sounded a lot better in my version, but you are right. That is a poor request to ask here of Team Freedom, not characteristic of them at all. I believe. Let's see it. Game three, we are ready. Between Team Freedom and No Tomorrow, we are all tied up in this series as we head into Game 3. I you ever just say something and then panic that it was wrong? Like, I say Game 3 and I'm like, what if it's 4? I actually do that <laughs> about, um, I'm going to put it as solid coin toss level of words <laughs> I put out on the mic. I, in fact, go, was that right? <laughs> I, know, I'm, I, I, I know that sounds... Like I'm joking, uh, but I actually, it's more frequent than you would expect for a dude who comes off as rather confident, just based on the fact that, I, I, I don't know, I have this thing where I'll just be like, I could look at, I could be like 20% slow on this spell 50 times before this cast, and I go ahead and throw out 20, and I'd be like, but what if? What if not? What if it's 15? What if it's 15? What if it's 30? What if in fact it's 25? I do the same thing. 
Dash. Nazmus has taken Dash on his Tychus. We've talked about Dash before, its capabilities, especially on Battlegrounds, where you can get the globes pretty quickly. This is a rotation Battleground, so Nazmus should be able to get those globes fairly quickly to finish out that quest. I like what we see out of laning phase already from Freedom. They're going to commit Rhaegar to Hakka, cycle out the wave, use the global to rotate through on top, and then heavy commit their four-man um, through mid and through bottom. It's a big power play. It should give them uh, about a 30-second window of an advantage. But look at the counter response. A new Barak automatic automatically went top to actually get the kill. Here shows up too. Nazmus rotating. Love the adjustment. Just on the fly there, coming out from, uh, excuse me, no tomorrow. The fact that Freedom played a very predictable early game. And they were just like, well, maybe we can do something, get a pick, lock it down. It's just, you don't look at Greymane, uh, Greymane, I guess, uh, but Gul'dan comps it to go like, yeah, we're going to get the level one pick. But some form of aggression and trying to make sure Freedom doesn't manipulate the map too freely. Yeah, it's cool to see No Tomorrow go out into the two and then be able to go back to mid. And now they've found Collusion. Mm. Equinox continuing to body block Collusion. Can he get back into Ghostful form? Yes, just in time. And now the perfect bait. Diablo goes down, resets for Cure, two kills to start things off. Yeah, the Howling Blast is a little too close to the wall for anybody want to continue. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I thought there was no world where Collusion survived that. You Actually, he did worst case scenario if you're a Rhaegar there. Your first thought, did you notice he went into wolf form and just autoed? The minute you do that, you should, as your solo support, I'm dead. You're like, guys, I clicked the dude, I bit the dude, and now I have no ghost wolf for so long. He stood there, went blow for blow, gave him the old fat punches with Rhaegar, then still got spirit wolf off. Somehow, last second there, I just, it's just so uncommon to see that. And the conclusion's walking away saying calculated. See if that continues to be a thing as Collusion plays as a Rhaegar. We've got Tahaka stalking in from the top. Equinox is pretty far forward going after Tychus, but Casanova is there oh. too. Fell Flame takes down Tychus in an instant. Casanova flexing there on that warrior roll. Again, he has just moved over from the melee assassin to this double warrior, or just the warrior here for you know, tomorrow. And the fact that just a three-man knockup directly after the flip coming out from Equinox. They've returned a lot onto the Skeletal Defenders. The chase is going to be there. Equinox was dragged in, but the rebuttal knockup cure. Going in, the damage is there, but the reset is not. He actually got that kill a bit too late, so that cooldown is going to be there. But look at the Skeletal Defenders, Gilly. This is very close. 30 to 36, but still Team Freedom maintain a lead. And now with that uh, player lead to all of No Tomorrow needs to get out fast. Cure is hoping to get oh. resets. There's one. He got him in and out. There's going to be the quick thief here that is cure on the Genji. Nice and flashy there. Yeah, that was exactly what I was talking about in the Shrines, though. The fact that No Tomorrow even was close, think about it. Freedom had a pick very early on, then committed to the actual Shrine, and still No Tomorrow's like, guys, we are only, what was it, three Skeletal Defenders away from getting the Punisher ourselves. Team Freedom makes it work, and with the Global, furthers their advantage, maybe more than they should be able to here early on. And, you know, what I asked of them is almost exactly what we've gotten so far here from Freedom. And it does require Team Freedom to continue to keep on the pressure and make sure that their rotations are strong yeah. to those uh, Punishers, the Shrines, so that they can get there and get the advantage that they had there too. Otherwise, they go in without the advantage, and then they're trying to force a fight. No Tomorrow could just back off and just play the sustain, poking game. Yeah, play that sustain game that almost paid off even at the last second, being a man down. But No Tomorrow was punished properly. They pick up the Shaman Camp for themselves. It's not going to be time with the objective. Dahaka should have pretty easy clear on that as well. Arthas is already making the transition out, so no tomorrow here. I would like to see, you know, capture a camp with a purpose. Not just the camp, pretty much anything with a purpose. Is oh, that man, that was so well done. Ah, oh, but Kier still has Swift Strike. It's so hard it turns to out capture a Genji. You have two gap closers, and you can be immune to all damage. It's really hard to die. Still, though, Casanova was there with the response, too, to hit him after Deflect. I had hopes, maybe, that we'd get to see the gank work out for no tomorrow, but no dice. No dice here. Shaman Camp timed a bit closer to the objective on the side of Freedom. They also have the Global, so whenever you have the Global, it gives you a bit more breathing room to capture it out, just especially if you win the 1v1 matchup. Uh, Greyman into the Haka, it's a bit more of a, wow, that initiation. Nazmus just got bodied up there through mid, and they're not done. Another suplex over Equinox. T 
tipping the scales over into No Tomorrow's favor here. Yeah, we have to remember that Equinox, although he's been known for being a melee player for forever, did Moonlight as the warrior for Gale Force Esports throughout Moonlight. Phase 1. <laughs> I love, that. Hey, I love good, that word so much. It's a good way to put it. But yeah, the uh, synergy between Equinox and Casanova, I felt like we got a taste of that yesterday between their Anubarak and Kerrigan. And now with Equinox shot calling, the fact that he can go in, be like, I want you to kill this target, this one right here that I'm setting in front of your face, Casanova follow up is has been really good so far. And that has caught No Tomorrow up to Team Freedom. So let's see what No Tomorrow does. They actually are banking on the 10 fight here. So see the Rhaegar and Genji moving up. That is, again, worst case. You're down 23. You don't win this fight unless you 100% all in right now. And they're going to go for it. If they fail this, they lose this Punisher. And they've even committed to Haka stocking up. So it's go time. And as we said, No Tomorrow has already gotten ahead. So they can back out, get ready to go back in, poke here and there between Greymane, between Gul'dan to see if they can find an opening for either a kill or just to steal away some of the skeletal defenders. Team Freedom are running out of time. If Freedom was going to do this, they needed to do it a half a wave later. They would be at the 10 mark now, but by committing that early on, they just essentially don't have that major advantage. They didn't have enough time into their favor. And we see, again, what we tried to highlight a bit earlier onto how these shrines should play out. And now Freedom is going to have to retreat, get the defense out, and now play a slower game. No Tomorrow is going to be looking to aggress. Hopefully try and force a fight pre-10, but it's going to be unrealistic for them now, and a front wall is about as good as it gets here on this Punisher. Heroic abilities coming in. X-Strike for Genji. Really? For Apoc is the only thing I can really see with the assumption that Apocalypse is coming in. When Apocalypse is thrown down, much like meta, you X-Strike, you dodge it. Nice oh. curse bullet. Man, that Odin just got wrecked. Nazmus is already down. Team Freedom still hoping that they can fight, despite the fact Drag hits Casanova, Collusion, and Zugrug there to get the kill. Wow, that Ancestral on to the horrified target of Cure, allowing him to keep himself up. And now he is going to do so much work here into this fight. Jason with the disengage. He has no mana. The Howling Flash should be the beginning of the end. Nice peel from Equinox. Dainsky with the rebuttal drag. And Uther here is di dished out by No Tomorrow. They are going to retreat successfully. Equinox is so tanky right now as Diablo, even withstanding a lot of damage. You have to drag too, but a lot of that too was that Tychus was not there to add to the damage. Yeah, he is a bit of a beefcake McGee up there, huh? <laughs> I just hate it because when you sigh like that, because you know, oh, that standard dread just makes up words for things. Beefcake McGee. Nobody sighs more at you than Kelly. You're right. You're right. Makeup artist. Can't make this pretty. She just. <laughs> she knows. She's like, man. They give me a task that is legitimately near impossible. She only sighs because she questions, is that the day where somebody finally goes, like, he, we can't fix this. <laughs> Speaking of Kelly, she gave me a uh, prediction for this match. She said that No Tomorrow was going to win at 3-1. She's on point. She is doing pretty well. She had uh, Kelly predictions actually. for both the series. I'll remind you guys of the, her prediction for the next match once we get there. Yeah, and uh, just to give you some background and call it Kelly's knowledge, she, in fact, learned that when the core dies, you win the video game roughly last week. So uh, she's got top-tier analysis. I completely agree with everything she has to say. But she has heard us talking about the teams for quite a while, so that works, just like the overpower worked on Kier there. So he has Deflect, he gets out. Both teams are here, but No Tomorrow has a good start on the Shrine again. Hits up, oh, Equinox goes in. The damage, so much pressure on a Zugrok. Kier dropped the X Strike, but nobody's going down. There's the Apocalypse hitting three members, but look at Dahaka in the front line. The stun is there, and he is down. Now Zugrok looking to get the retreat out. The body blocks from Tiger JK are beautiful. He cost him his life, though, and with that Ancestral, he may be regretting that choice. Arthas was able to stay alive. He had Army of the Dead down far enough out that he could continue to just barely keep himself in the game, standing on the point. But again, no tomorrow and their ability to clear out a shrine quickly. Even though they lost their support, they didn't have 13. No tomorrow still get the shrine and another Punisher. Baiting it over the wall is going to be Cure. That's the standard here. 13 talent tier out of reach, though. Well, what is No Tomorrow going to do? They need to find a way to open up the map. I mean, Gilly, this is the third Punisher we've gone through here. And again, we're yet to see a fort fall. That's not totally unheard of. The first two, 
it's usually like you're like, a, oh, you know, the fort isn't going to fall too much here. But by the third is normally we're like, okay, you may not get the fort, but at least you're going to take that brawl around it and open, you know, or at least get those type of pressures. But it's still a slow, patient game for both of these teams. And yeah, Genji doing his best to try to bring down that bottom fort that is really low for no tomorrow. But a lot of this has been, too, that Team Freedom, every time they know that they have been able to deal with the Punisher because No Tomorrow has lost somebody or No Tomorrow doesn't want to get aggressive with their Punisher because, like in the last instance, they are down a talent tier, it allows Team Freedom to immediately send a Haka somewhere, to be able to push out a lane, soak, and in that... For that reason, No Tomorrow has not been able to even push somewhere else. They just push along with the Punisher. So it has been a slow, patient game for both of these teams as we head into the later stages of it. You know, it's, it is it is interesting how it has managed to play out here. The Double Shaman is going to match up on top. See Tiger there trying to abuse Fog of War. Hoping somebody makes a mistake of overextending. But members of No Tomorrow are going to give up. They are going to forfeit the Shaman battle that is up on top. Typically when you see teams do this, it's going to be with the intent to gank on a different lane. They choose mid, but Cure is in fact a Genji. And the other lane that you can gank is a Dahaka. We learned yesterday, both of those, and we learned Genji today. We learned Dahaka is a hard guy to kill yesterday. It's just they have to take a fight blow for blow into the actual vulnerable sections of Team Freedom's composition, which in fact is going to be the Tychus, Rhaegar, and Arthas. They did find one Tychus earlier on, and even Nazmas tried to drop that Odin and still died with it, but he was hoping for the resistance from that. Oh, Team Freedom will just say, I'll take that. And okay. Uh, are you guys cool with this? Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, we're gonna head to the shrine now. That's okay. really good. That double camp, though, Team Freedom's running up this time. Now they force No Tomorrow to decide, do we defend those two camps or do we get the start on the Punisher? And it also forces the race to 16 with the Haka side soaking. No Tomorrow needs to be on this and pressuring out as fast as possible because every skeletal defender, that's already too many. Now Freedom should be in enough time and enough of an advantage that they can essentially go, you, you either have to all in this exact second, or we can wait it, stall it out, and they're going to try. They go in. The APOC, the Curse Bully, the Whoa. damage! Collusion just like, absolutely deleted! They did it! That was about best case scenario to find that Rhaegar and take him down. Now Zugrug is the next to be in trouble. He is brought down by No Tomorrow. We get two quick kills on this shrine. They will clear it out. Team Freedom has to defend yet another No Tomorrow Punisher. And you know, I feel like that if anything, that puts us a bit of a case into the t conversation about where's the gray main been here? Because that's only possible because Curse Bullet is such a easy, beautiful follow-up here. I mean, watch this. The minute we see this still replay, but Diablo goes in, watch Jason. Just one Curse Bullet rotation, watch this. He dead. Like, almost, <laughs> almost half that damage is just Jason throwing out a spell. Keep in mind, that's a 30 second cooldown. There were a lot of things used on that. Even Horrify was dropped down. But the important thing is that No Tomorrow did get those two kills. It was on Rhaegar. He can't Ancestral himself. He can't cleanse himself. It's the perfect target for Equinox to find. Diving in, the team was there for the follow-up. And No Tomorrow will be rewarded. They're ahead in experience. They're going to push elsewhere instead of trying to force down, uh, keep towers with the Punisher. But Team Freedom respond in kind. See Chase there from Cure. But without any forts down, you know, Cure's area to play has been limited quite heavily. Yes, he can dodge past fort walls, much like Illidan can, but he still always wants to make sure as many structures are down so he has that free area to get resets, dashes, cyber agility. You know, he can do he can do a little bit of everything. But it all starts with this, the APOC flip, the Cursed Bullet, and now again, that is a dead Rhaegar Freedom. Dropping the X Strike here, but already a member down. I don't think they can save this fight. No, Tunneling Claws is going to be used, but there's one getting taken out. How much do Team Freedom lose now? Nazmus just gets barely hit by Burrow Charge. Zugrug and Nazmus will make it out. But now, with three members down for so long, No Tomorrow is hoping they can open up the battleground, finally start skyrocketing ahead in experience so that they can get into a position to win this game. I don't know post movement speed nerf to mounts, but at least pre, one of the weird interactions against a Diablo as a Rhaegar 
At level one, you want to take Lightning Bond because you want to get the Shrine Altar. We talked about the pressure. But to avoid what's happening here, because he's always the target, because he can't self ancestral, you actually used to, with the level one, the 20% mobility you gain out of Ghost Wolf, he can Q you, but your mobility is just enough to gain the distance to where he can never immediately follow up E unless you get pinned into a wall mm. or you have something blocking you on the other side. That could have been something we see Freedom go into purely to avoid what is this one-shot dream, or, now that we know we don't have that talent, absolute occlusion needs to stop show. Yes. Just, he needs to be in fog at all points. He just sit there, wait, wait, wait. Okay, this is where they APOC, drop an Ancestral, then all in the fight immediately after. Especially because of From the Shadows. He is, that is a long range charge to come in. Devastating charge is done too, so that is adding to the amount of damage that can be done as long as he's running him into the wall. So definitely don't stand in front of a wall and don't stand where you could be charged. It's either that or Genji. Genji or Arthas or Dahaka. One of those three has to wear the damage. And that is possible with Curse Bullet. You just move in between up until the 20. So, you know, that is a that's the only way. Otherwise, no tomorrow is just going to win every fight. They have 20 advantage and they just walk up, press the R button, look at Collusion and say, good night, my sweet prince. But then you're grouping in front of the Rhaegar and there's Horrify. That's scary too. Somebody has to save him. If Rhaegar dies, you 100% lose the fight. Yeah. If everybody gets horrified, it's a pretty bad fight. I'm going to go with a pretty bad fight out of these two. I've done the math. I've seen it twice. Like, it's just not working. I agree with you. It's one of those, like, in your head, is this truly going to work out this way? Is this going to be the fight that I need? But I know let inclusion be flipperooned right on top of the APOC is just not the answer. I just feel like maybe getting further ahead earlier on maybe would have helped out with yeah. this issue too. I, you know, but we can't take back time. You kill you you're just if holding I on could to the turn past. Turn back time. <laughs> Why are we singing so much this weekend? It is like old 80s <laughs> music. <laughs> Odin's down. Punisher here. 20 advantage online for Node tomorrow. They want minimum of a keep. There's from the shadows the drag rebuttal. They this might get Equinox, but there's a bolt. All right, that's really good, though. They force that out. They at least are able to get through the first charge. Rhaegar's way back, so far back. Yeah. He's one scared pupper. There it is, the flip over. No APOC, though. The rebuttal's there. APOC it does not land. It only hits one. But look at they got Arthas onto the backside. That might be enough. The shielding yet to be removed. Ancestral is suboptimal. And if Nazmus drops, that should be it here, Gilly. He was popped right into the core. That was his own demise. Only Cure, Collusion, and Dainsky left up at this point. Ancestral's not available. So many things not available. There's one more drag on Equinox, but Equinox is the Diablo that just won't die. The true Lord of Terror. No, tomorrow takes game three you know we were talking about the diablo gul'dan rotation still not totally sold on the gul'dan but the diablo argument was made by equinox for sure they follow up with the cursed bullet immediately into it it's just one of those things where it's where they drafted it i would argue maybe you know at least risky is the way i'd apply it but their execution on it was definitely impressive it was terrifying it was just drop the cursed bullet, go rah, 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 and just kill him. Especially once they caught Rhaegar and were able to figure out the best target for that, getting Rhaegar. And then later on, you have Collusion who's scared in the back. Somebody else just becomes the next target. It was very hard to figure out where you were able to stand, especially when you needed to be defending the Punisher. Yeah, the game kind of provided that weird jigsaw puzzle in the middle of the game, right? Where you go, we've drafted this comp, and we know it's not terrible, but it's definitely not winning fights how we're used to practicing it. So... Within legitimately three fights, and usually it's about a five-minute block, I have to figure out how I fix this, solve it, and then execute it properly, and everybody has to be at blind faith that that is the new solution, right? Uh, we didn't see the adjustment. Uh, we saw the adjustment actually pretty effective there, but it's, it's just hard in the middle of a game to be like, okay, things aren't working. How can we stop you know, our Rhaegar from getting one shot? And by that point, when you have a new answer, it's usually game over anyway. What do you think about the X strike in this situation? Yeah, it provided some mobility and some escape for yeah. here, but in this instance, maybe just being flanking from behind and then applying a lot of pressure to Gul'dan, the backline of uh, Team uh, 
Team Freedom, no, no tomorrow in there, uh, then maybe it would make Equinox come back or yeah. Casanova at least not be there. So it's not the double warriors all focusing in. I would put it as I definitely can understand the thought process of the meta argument of dodging damage, especially around huge things like APOC. But it, then it hits the argument of like, well, were you even the target in the first place? Which it's your Genji. I mean, if you're getting flipped in the main blow up target in a Diablo one shot gray main composition, I'd probably be like, if you're dying there, I'd just be like, you just need to play better. Like we need you to just step this up. So I would say the X strike is essentially a solution to a problem that never existed. Yeah, he was already getting ganked yeah. and getting through it just fine earlier exactly. on, even before he had heroic abilities. So then you go Dragon Blade, then your approach to the fight is, you might be able to kill my backline, but I'm applying so much aggro to yours it's the old school arthas illidan matchup it didn't used to be i'm going to slow the illidan it was like nah you can fight my backline and we'll live but i'll fight yours and i will make sure one of you die and that would be more of the approach you would expect with a dragon blade i think it would have been a nice change doesn't mean it's the solution uh, i still think that there was just compositional holes that were kind of overlooked for the first part of the game and then freedom gave up a bit too much on their play on shrines yeah that is Man, it is hard to be able to, especially when it's always the focus on the support, but a tank would be equally scary even. Just anybody can be a target when you have that much blow up between Devastating Charge and Curse Bullet, and you have Divine Shield to bail out whoever is up in there. We saw Divine Shield used on Diablo a couple of times. It was, it was well done from No Tomorrow. Very well executed. Yeah, it was clean. And now I want more Greyman. That's all, that's all I got from that game. I was like... So we're gray maining now? Because it turns out it, you just want to fight in half a second just by pressing the R button. And again, why gray main is so impactful is not even necessarily he has that damage. It is such a short cooldown. Anytime you can have a cooldown that short of that high impact, it's the same reason a new Barax is at the top, right? It's just Cocoon. I, you can be new to the game and still be good with Cocoon. Literally never played a game of Heroes of the Storm in your life. You touch the keyboard with your mouse over somebody and you've isolated them for like 20 seconds. Same with Curse Bullet. 35% of their max health. Just pew, gone. Well, current, this is a, current health, yeah? by the way, not max. 